Have you ever found yourself frustrated with ChatGPT, wondering why is it not quite hitting the mark? Prompting is not really about engineering or technology, it's about basic communication. I've noticed that a lot of people struggle with asking the right question. If you're not getting the answers that you're looking for, it's probably because you're not asking the questions right. And this is not just from tools like ChatGPT, but it applies to general communication in life. If you're new here, I'm Jean, your trusted engineering mentor. And today I'm going to break down the five tips for prompting. Then I'm going to give you some real life examples and a demo of how you can use these tips. Honestly, I've been having a lot of fun scripting this video, so I hope you enjoy it too. Let's start with tip number one. Know your goal. Before you do anything, you gotta first figure out what your goal is. If you're talking to an AI, what do you want the AI to do for you? If you're talking to a real person, same thing applies. What are you looking for? Are you looking for coding help, brainstorming ideas, or helping solve a problem? Having a clear goal is the first step. And I get it, sometimes you're not exactly sure what you're looking for, and that's okay, that's why I'm here. I have some questions that you can try asking. What challenges or problems am I currently facing? What skills or knowledge do I want to acquire or improve? What kind of impact or contribution do I want to make? First, start out by thinking about what the problem is and then try to work your way up to exactly what you're looking for. For example, I'm looking for advice on how to land a job as a software engineer. How do I master AI engineering so that I can revamp my career or do a career change or become an AI engineer? These are all great examples. Then tip number two is you want to introduce yourself. So you want to start out by describing your situation. For example, are you a student studying computer science who's about to graduate in a year or two? Do you have any previous internship experience? experience or work experience, maybe you don't have any experience, that's okay to provide all of this information. If you put step one and two together, you can say something like, I'm feeling lost because I'm a college student studying computer science and I don't really know what to do with my life. That could be the problem that you want to solve. And your introduction or context could be that I have no experience, I have applied to over hundreds of jobs, and I have not heard back from anyone. Or if you're trying to learn AI, you can explain the context like, assume I know nothing about coding, or you can say, you know, I have done four years of computer science at college, but I feel like I'm still not experienced enough. Or maybe you've been working in the field for five years as a front-end engineer, and now you want to pick up AI engineer and you're not sure where to start. So keep it straightforward and simple, but add a little bit of detail about yourself so that you can get the best advice that's appropriate for your situation. Tip number three, you can make it even more clear by providing specific examples to make your question more clear, but also to make your answers more concrete. Try to provide examples that are related to your situation or the problem that you're trying to solve. For example, you can say, I want a step-by-step -step guide with resources for how I can approach my job search process. Tell me each step with action steps, goals, and resources that I can use. Or you can say, I want you to talk to me like a therapist because I don't know where to begin. Talk to me like a life coach or a career coach if you feel like you're a little bit lost and you need more questions to help you guide through the process. Tip number four is setting the right tone and creating the right vibe for you. This is my favorite. So you can basically decide how you want the AI to talk to you. Do you want it to be elaborate? Do you want it to be simple? Do you want it to be serious, casual? What is the tone that you're looking for? I also love to use real life uh, personas. I love Oprah. So you can ask ChatGPT, talk to me like Oprah would talk to me. I found it to work really well if I try authors like Eckhart Tolle. I've asked it to talk to me like Alain de Bitong even Dalai Lama, any figures that you like in real life, you can ask ChatGPT to take on that persona for you. It makes the whole process really fun and I love experimenting with it. So I'll show you some examples in a bit. And the last tip is to iterate, iterate, iterate. Prompting, just like any learning or engineering or communication, can be an iterate iterative process. Don't get discouraged if you don't get it right the first time. Keep on tweaking your prompts. Analyze the responses. Fine-tune your strategy. The act of tweaking and improving yourself is a basis for any kind of learning. Use different examples, use different words or formats. If something isn't quite clear, make it simpler. Now I want to put it all together and show you some real-life examples. So let's get to my screen. So let's start with the first example. I'm gonna say, I'm feeling lost because I'm a college student to find the perfect job, but I don't know where to start. I have no job experience, 
I apply to hundreds of jobs. I want you to be like Oprah. What is the Oprah? How is it auto-correcting? That's pretty impressive. You know, I've actually seen in one of the videos on YouTube, someone was saying that you need to make sure your grammar is correct, which is complete BS because, I mean, ChatGPT is pretty smart. I've asked actually like completely wrong words and ChatGPT still often understands me. So don't worry about your grammar or spelling or anything. ChatGPT is really smart. Back to my prompt. Talk to me in a friendly and inspiring inspiring um, tone, guiding me through the process of finding my goals with thoughtful questions. Let's try that. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, first of all, big virtual hug to you. <laughs> yeah, that's probably <laughs> what I need. It's completely normal to feel lost at this stage of life, especially with the pressure of finding the perfect job and your passion. Thank you. Take a deep breath because we're going to navigate this together. Are you ready? Let's start by asking yourself a few reflective questions. What are the subjects or activities that make you lose track of time when you're engaged in them? What are the things you've always been curious about, even if they weren't part of your academic curriculum? Let your mind wander a bit. Now think about the skills you enjoy using. Is it writing, problem solving, working with people, maybe something technical? Consider your strengths. Oh, both in and out of the classroom. What do friends and family say you're great at? Oh, that's a really great question. What do friends and family say you're great at? Okay, it's okay if you don't have job experience yet. Everyone starts somewhere. What are the aspects of the job that you think would make you excited to wake up every morning? How would I know if I don't have a job experience? Is it making a positive impact on people's lives, working in a dynamic environment, or perhaps having creative freedom? Great questions. Let's explore your interests a bit more. If you could spend the day in the life of anyone, real or fictional, who would it be and why? This might give you insight into the kind of lifestyle or career that resonates with you. Now imagine your ideal day at work. What does it look like? What are you doing? Who are you working with? And how does it make you feel? Envisioning your ideal workplace can help you identify the key elements that are important to you in a job. Is this why the day in the life of a software engineer videos are so popular? I learned something new. Going back to the prompts, remember the journey to finding your passion and the right job is a process. It's okay not to have all the answers right now. The key is to stay curious, explore different avenues, and be open to discovering new things about yourself. It sounds like Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, don't be disheartened by the job application process. Rejections are part of the journey. Use each one as a stepping stone, a chance to learn and improve. What kind of feedback have you received, if any, and how can you use that information to strengthen your next application? You're on a unique journey. It's all about the progress, not perfection. Embrace the uncertainty and trust that you're on the path to discovering your purpose. You've got this. This is so nice. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I feel good. But let me answer the first question, what I like to do. I personally really love analytic, analyzing things. I love doing research. I love reading. I like spreadsheets. That's what I like. I also like to talk to, pe talk to people, friends, about the topics I'm studying or learning. Okay, let's see what ChatGPT says. That's fantastic. It sounds like you have real passion for analysis, research, and communication. Let's dive a bit deeper into this. Analytical skills, spreadsheets, reading, communication. There's a lot of questions. What specific aspect of analyzing things do you enjoy the most? Excel and spreadsheet tools are incredible. Data analysis, financial modeling, or project management. I like those things. Given your interest, have you considered a career in academia, market research, or even journalism? For me, doing YouTube is kind of like journalism. If you have noticed my videos, I like to do research about specific topics, research it really and study it, analyze it, and then share about it on YouTube. So that is the perfect career for me. <laughs> Communication. 
Um, your love for discussing topics with friends is valuable skill. It suggests that you not only enjoy acquiring knowledge but also sharing it. Yeah, that's also YouTube again. I like to talk about what I have learned on my videos. This is really fun for me. It's great. Number five, connecting with friends about topics you're passionate about is a form of networking. Have you considered networking in a professional context? So yes, I do a lot of networking and I do host a lot of events. Um, given your interest, roles like data analyst, market researcher, content creator, <laughs> or even a consultant could be a great fit. Consider exploring internships or volunteering in these areas to gain practical experience and build a network. This is so good because whenever I talk to um, students who have no experience, they talk about how do I become a software engineer or how do I break into the market, I always say try volunteering. I do really believe volunteering is the best way to really gain hands-on experience. It helps you um, have items to like liners put on your resume, but also it teaches you, right? You're learning for free. It's better than going to school and taking classes. You actually get to learn if you like doing that job or what are the different things that you like about working or doing things. It really teaches you about yourself. So it is something that I do highly recommend. And apparently Oprah style chat GPT agrees with me. So this is great. Last paragraph. Remember, it's okay if you don't have all the answers right away. The journey to finding the perfect career is often a process of exploration and self-discovery. Keep analyzing, researching, and talking about what you love. You'll find the path that aligns with your passions and skills. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Um, there was another question that I wanted to look at. Rejections are part of the journey. Use each one as a stepping stone, a chance to learn and improve what kind of feedback can be received in FNE. So I'm going to say I have been applying to hundreds of jobs on LinkedIn. I only get automated rejection emails. How can I learn from this experience? What am I doing wrong? First of all, kudos to you for persistence. Oh, so encouraging. Um, the job process can be challenging, but each rejection is an opportunity to learn and improve. Let's break down some of the potential areas for rejection. Resume and cover letter, keywords and skills, networking, follow-ups, interview preparation, learn from rejection, diversity in your search. You know, these are pretty good. Okay, so let's say you apply to 100 jobs, and if you're actually not hearing back from at least, I think the statistics say about 10%. Let me actually search. Let's say if you apply to 100 jobs and have not gotten an interview, when I say interview, I mean pre-screening. If the percentage of you getting a call from a real person is less than 20%, that means you're below average, right? So if that is the case, then definitely 99% of the time, something's off with your resume or cover letter. A lot of times we don't do cover letters anymore. So most of the time is your resume. One of the things that could be missing is the keywords that are used on your resume. Um, that's why I wrote the ultimate resume handbook. So you can learn to spot your own red flags in your resume. That is right on. Good job, ChatGPT. For every 100 jobs that you applied for, if you're not getting 20 calls, then there's room for improvement in your resume. Let's say you are getting 20 calls, but then um, don't lead to offers. That means that you need to work on your interview prep. Whew, I feel like this was a really great example. I want to give you another one. So let's start a new chat. I was thinking about doing a video about learning software engineering of some sort, but I actually just did one about um, coming up with a study plan. And then I did one about coming up with a project plan for AI engineering. Go check out those videos if you haven't. Um, let's think of something else. Let's say, okay, I am a software engineer at a small startup. My salary is below market rate based on my research from levels at FYI. And I even know the one of the engineers on my team is getting paid more than me. I have more experience and have been working longer than that person. I don't know what to do. This feels unfair. Talk to me like you're my career coach. Help me through this crisis. Talk to me in the tone of who are some famous people? 
who's that guy? Uh, art of not giving a f Mark Manson. Oh, not Mark Manson. Let's try it. Hey, Rockstar Engineer. First off, kudos to you for doing your homework and realizing your true worth. It's not easy to confront the fact that you might be undervalued, but recognizing it is the first step to making positive changes. Let's navigate through the situation with a dash of Mark Manson's no-nonsense wisdom. You're not exactly riding the high way of compensation that your skills and experience deserves. But here's the deal. Life is too short to be settling for mediocrity, especially when it comes to your paycheck. Now let's cut through the noise and figure out the next steps. First, take a deep breath. Remember, this is a challenge, not a catastrophe. It's time to channel that frustration into action. That is pretty inspiring. Step one, cl clarify your value prop. Ask yourself, what unique value do you bring to the table? What sets you apart from your peers? Make list of your accomplishments, skills, and extra responsibilities you've shouldered. This is your ammunition, so load up. Choose your battles wisely. You're not fighting a war, you're negotiating your worth. I like that. Decide whether you want to address this issue with your current employer or start exploring other opportunities. Sometimes having an offer from elsewhere is the wake up call your employer needs. I have mixed feelings about this because I did ask in the question that I work for a small startup. So yes, this advice is not wrong. Oftentimes, if you do work for a tiny little startup, there's a lot more room for negotiation. I used to work at Meta as a software engineering manager. Let's say one of my um, reports come to me saying, like, I'm not getting paid enough. This is unfair. There's not a whole lot that I could do as a manager. Even if you have an offer from a different company, I can't really give you a raise because because it's not really up to me. Because I asked in the question that I work for a small startup, I am okay with this answer. Preparation for conversation. If you're opting for a direct approach with your current employer, prep for the conversation. Practice what you wanna say, and more importantly, how you wanna convey it. Focus on the facts and figures, your skills, achievements, and the market rate you've found. That's good. Be confident, not cocky. <laughs> I like that. Confidence is the key, but there is a fine line between confidence and arrogance. You're stating your case, not declaring war, right? I, I love that. When you're talking to your manager, your manager is not your enemy. Um, I mean, as a manager, I want you to be well. I want you to get paid. Please don't fight me. Think of me as a partner is how I felt. So keep it professional. Emphasize your commitment to the team and the company. I like to describe it as think of your manager as your lawyer, right? You want to get help from your lawyer to put together your case. So think of it as you're like submitting evidence to your lawyer so your lawyer can best represent you. Leveraging your network. Reach out to your network for advice and support they might have been similar situations and can offer valuable insight don't be afraid to seek guidance it's a sign of strength not weakness that's good know your limits be prepared for different outcomes that's true your employer may not agree with you um, they may not be able to match your salary the, the salary you desire but they might offer other perks flexible hours more responsibility or professional development opportunities know your bottom line and willing to stand by it that's really good something similar actually happened to me when i was negotiating my offer with whatsapp they wanted me to start as a contractor not a full-time employee I'm saying that all of their engineers start as a contractor which was not a lie all the earlier engineers at whatsapp started out as a contractor and then after six to twelve months they would convert you to full-time so i thought well that's not really ideal but if i'm gonna be a contractor i want flexible hours because I had done consulting in the past and I know some people do uh, four days a week. So instead of doing five days, eight hours each, you basically work 10 hours a day for four days a week and they were cool with that. So that's one of the many reasons why I took the job at working at WhatsApp. If you want to maybe go to grad school, you can ask them to pay for tuition. There are many things that you can negotiate. It's not just about the salary. So think about what else you want. Last paragraph is remember life is about choices. You're not a victim of your circumstances. You are the architect of your destiny. So take charge, be strategic, and let your worth shine through. It's time to level up, my friend. I think that is a great wrap for this video. 
take charge of those prompts, take initiatives, give it some good examples, play around with it, see where it leads you, and level up your prompting game. I'll see you next time.